Hi, good morning folks. Welcome to the early bird. I've put some water on my face. As you can see, I'm wearing some of it. Let's get on it. We had three games yesterday. And one of them I'm very happy to report about. What a game this was. My goodness, this was a good game. All right, let's go out east. We'll start there. Marchand breaks tie in third. Bruins top Maple Leafs in game three to retake series lead. Let's look at the numbers. Shots on goal, 34-30 for the Bruins. The Leafs had the edge 55% to 45 on the faceoffs. Leafs 0 for 5 on the power play. The Bruins 2 for 3, and that tells your tale right there, folks. Right there. Look at the hits. 68 to 65. Don't tell me we don't got to get tougher. 68-65 in favor of Toronto. So two of the top three hitting teams in the league right there. And 24 blocks for the Bruins, 18 for the Leafs, 15 giveaways Bruin, 14 Leafs. Leafs had eight takeaways, Bruins had four. Shots a goal per period. Seven apiece in the first, 15 to nine Bruins in the second, and 14 to 12 Leafs in the third for that 34-30 edge for the Bruins. Scoring. Nice, gets his first to the playoffs on a nice tip in. Uh, in front of the net, I don't know why they got it listed as a, a wrister. It was a perfect play in front of the net. Makes it one to nothing on a nice pass from Marner, actually. Uh, one nothing Leafs at 13-10. Then Frederick ties it up at 17-37 on a real important goal at the time to like get momentum back from Toronto. This is in the second. Ain't no scoring in the first, folks. So 17-37. They tie it up going into the third. In the third period, DeBrusque, who has been feel like a Leafs killer in this series so far, on the power play from Marchand and Coyle at 107. And the Bruins now have their first lead of the game. And a little over 10 minutes later, Bertuzzi from Riley and Domi ties it up 2-2. Two two. And look at this. 28 seconds later, who else? Brad Marchand, <laughs> his first of the playoffs. Makes it 3-2. to two. That's your game winner. And who gets the empty netter? You guessed it. Brad Marchand from Pasternak at 1924. And he had something to say to the Leafs after he put in that empty netter as well. I was really enjoying this game, guys. Really enjoying this game. I'll tell you, this, this Toronto team, their fans have got to stop being crybabies. All the refs, all this, all stop. It's playoff hockey. <laughs> okay, it's playoff hockey. You're going to have bad calls. We're, we're, if anybody knows about bad calls, we do. Come on. You're going to have bad calls in the playoffs. But Toronto's up to the challenge mentally and physically, it looks like, in this series. So this is not over. But this is an important win. Because this puts Toronto on the ropes next game. If Toronto lose next game, it's lights out. I think we know that. All right, let's go out west. Golden Knights defeat Stars in game two, extend Western first round lead. The numbers? Shots on goal, 26-21 for Vegas. Very tight in the faceoffs, 51%, 49 edge for the Stars. Stars one for one on the power play. Uh, Vegas 0 for one. And 53 hits for... The, the Stars, 55 hits for Vegas. Block shots, 18 Dallas, 15 Vegas. Nine giveaways Dallas, six Vegas. And the Stars had four takeaways. The Knights had two. Uh, shots and goal per period. 11 to six Dallas in the first. 10, five Vegas in the second. 10, five Vegas in the third for that 26-21 total. Scoring. Robertson on the power play makes it one to nothing for Dallas at 16, 47 of the first, and that's all the offense the Stars would see for the night was one power play goal. That was it. Vegas are finding their groove, folks. 1-1, Marsha Show ties it up at 18.09. From Eichel and Barbashev, we head into the second. Hannafin gets his first playoff goal as a night at 18.53. And then in the third, who else? Jack Eichel gets the empty netter at 19.26 for Marsha Show, and that's your game. 
I'm not surprised. I picked Vegas to win this series in six. I just don't think Dallas has what it takes to win the cup. I just don't believe that that's a Stanley Cup team. I think they're overrated. And I think Ottinger is not going to find his groove. He might have kept them in it yesterday because they just maybe needed a bit of goaltending to stay in. It's not like they were kill peppering him in shots either. They're going to have to figure something out over in uh, Dallas. But I don't think Dallas has what it takes to beat Vegas. I've been thinking that right from the beginning of this series. People that were picking them to win the cup or go to the finals, it kind of surprised me because why? Really, why? They don't exactly have this deadly captain or anything. Anyway, let's head over to the other big game. Kopitar Kings defeat Oilers in overtime in Game 2 to even West first round series. Really good game, this one. Numbers? Shots on goal, Edmonton with the edge 31-26. Edmonton with the edge and face us 51% to 49 Oilers are 1 for 3 in the power play. The Kings 0 for 3 and still found a way to win. High hitting affair also. 55 hits Edmonton, 53 Kings. Edmonton with 23 blocks. The Kings with 20. Edmonton with 8 giveaways. The Kings with 13. Edmonton with 13 takeaways. The Kings with 11. So the Oilers had the edge in every single stat basically. Except um, goals. Scoring, um, shots of goal per period. 10-7 Edmonton in the first, 16-10 Edmonton in the second, and the Kings start coming on in the third, 8-4, because Edmonton at this point were, I think, getting a little nervous, actually, 8-4. In the overtime, Kings scoring their first shot, the only other shot each for that 31-26 total for Edmonton, and on LA's first shot, they win. Scoring. Kempe, the Oilers' killer, is back doing it again in this series. Kempe makes it one to nothing at 3:19, and Kempe makes it two to nothing at 14:57 of the first. And all of a sudden, the Oilers are playing come from behind hockey, and that's what caught up to them in the end, I believe. Kulak makes it two to one at 17:33, and then Doughty, before the period is out, at 18:02, makes it three to one LA after one. We go to the second. Holloway, who had a good game, also makes it 3-2. The Oilers pull within a goal at 7.51. And Hyman, um, on the power play, ties it up 3-3 three three at 10.33. So we're halfway through the game. The game is tied. The Oilers are right where they want to be. We go to the third. Early goal by L.A. Fiala at 148 makes it 4-3. Uh, and then Holloway again. Another early goal in the third makes it 4-4 four at four, 323. And there you see overtime. Kopitar picks it off on the wrister at 207. And that's your game. So uh, you can, I guess, I would break it down this way. Boston's more mentally strong than Toronto. That's it. Really. And Toronto, a, a, a Toronto's only chance, in my opinion, guys, the only chance they have to win the series if Boston's stupid enough, dumb enough, and idiotic enough to go with Olmark. Because Olmark should be a Maple Leaf, the way he is mentally, in my opinion. He just really can't handle pressure, that guy. He just can't. And he's benefiting off Swayman's strong mentality, I believe. They got to keep Swayman in nets. He's... he's They'd be up three games to nothing right now, I believe, if they would have kept Swayman in and not boneheaded move. If they ever wind up losing this series, that coach should be fired in Boston. I'll just say it. I don't care how good they were last year. He should be fired because come playoff time, he doesn't know what he's doing if they lose this series. Get him out, Boston. If, he, uh, if, he, if you guys lose the first round of Toronto, it's time for that coach to go because what a bad call in game two putting in Elmer. Just terrible call. I'm still pissed about it, but whatever. Boston's got them two games to one again. Don't kill the momentum. If they put an L mark next game, I won't even watch. That's where I stand with the Bruins in Toronto. I won't even watch. I won't. I don't want to watch L mark because I know what he's going to do in the playoffs. He's going to blow it for them. And that's that. And um, let, me get, uh, let me get over here. Okay, Dallas, no surprise there. Okay, that's not a surprise. I, if Dallas fans are surprised, they're out of their minds. This team 
just beat them just beat them last year in a series. They just beat them last year. So just because Dallas is good during the regular season, who cares? That doesn't mean anything. Not come playoff time. Any we know this as fans. So Dallas, I think, is going to be pretty much dusted after. And they might go down four straight. Really, Vegas is gearing up, guys. So they're going to have to be put down. This team and the, the one team I know that can do it in the West to them is Colorado. That's the one team I trust. I don't even trust Edmonton to put down Vegas. Vegas is going to be a tough beast to put down, but they will. They, I, I'm pretty sure they will not repeat. Pretty sure. Or if they wind up, wind up playing in the finals against a team like Boston, I could see Vegas losing there also. And then Edmonton, well, Edmonton LA, guys, it's not going to be all one-sided. That's going to go back and forth. That's probably going to be the Oilers, I figure, come out of that series. But if they go to LA and lose the next two, hey, then it's, you know, then LA all of a sudden, then L there's all this pressure on Edmonton again. Edmonton cannot lose this series without everybody wanting the head of the coach. That's for sure. So Edmonton have to get through this series. We'll see what they do there. McDavid was pretty non-existent compared to the first game I thought in this one. He just wasn't dominating like the first game. So the game for me with the most interest was the Bruins. And it's funny it was Marchand that did it to them because they were, they were, they were playing dirty all night with Marchand. I got to say, Toronto all night long didn't stop and it caught up to them in the end because they let Marchand get in their heads even when he was doing nothing. And that tells you what kind of a team the Bruins are. The Bruins are a smart organization. We'll see. Again, I'm going to end it with this. If they go back to Allmark, because if they go back to Allmark, no joke, I'm not even going to watch the game. I refuse. I'm not watching Allmark in the playoffs. I, and I'm not even a Bruins fan, guys, but I can't sit there and pretend that Allmark's the way to go. No chance. He blew that series last year. And he'll blow this one this year. Keep swimming in nets, Boston. All right, guys, done. And I shall see you when I see you. Might be tonight, might not be. I'll try. I mean, I've probably had some time tonight. So hopefully tonight I'll see you guys again. Have a good one.